Um, so it happened last summer, and about 24 hours into its launch, I convinced somebody to get me an invite, and I hopped in. And one of the very first things that I noticed was this, the Google Hangout. And this is different because it completely changes the simplicity of multi-camera com conversation. And as Sarah has said it many times before, it's embedded inside a social network. So not only do you have the ease of communicating with people across all kinds of vast locations, it is also socially networked so you can I have an idea of who you're talking to and why. And it can go from no reason why to a panel here in Columbia, Missouri. So why is this a game changer? Has anyone heard of a Cisco Telepresence Center? All right. I've experienced a Cisco Telepresence Center. It's expensive and awesome. You feel like you're there. And you know what's awesome about a Hangout? The only difference is the screen is smaller. Although this is a pretty big screen. But on a normal situation, you've got your computer and you've got up to 10 people that you're talking to. And just like a Cisco Telepresence Center, whoever speaks is the person that pops up. So I'm going to introduce you to some of the folks that we are uh, joining, that are joining with us today. And here's what's kind of interesting. This is going to be kind of flexible. Um, <laughs> We have people that are going to be bouncing in and out, um, and uh, we have people that are um, in the state. We have people that are uh, across oceans. So we have a great team of people. So I'm going to just kind of go down the line really quickly. I want you guys to in introduce yourselves in a minute, a minute each. I'm going to start with Kim. Kim. Hi. I know, I know Tim. <laughs> All right, one minute. Kim, what, 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 why are you here? And tell us about the power of, of Hangouts for you. I'm here because of Sarah Hill. I am actually one of the fortunate people who've been able to meet her in person and meet you in person uh, due to the Hangouts. I am a social media uh, expert, I guess you could say, and I hail from St. Louis, Missouri. And I enjoy helping people get on Google Plus and other social media platforms to spread the word about them and their business. Uh, I don't know, Matt, are you available to just check in and yeah. introduce yourself? Yeah, I just got it uh, going there. I'm uh, Matt Markovich, and I am a reporter uh, at KOMO-TV in the ABC affiliate Channel 4 in Seattle. And uh, again, uh, we are just putting Hangouts into our newscast, but we're also doing something different with our newscast, our Hangouts. We are sending a feed down the Google Hangout line so anybody around the, around the world can see actually see what we're doing with the Hangouts as it happens. So new technology here in Seattle. So that's what I'm... We're at a streaming station. Behind me is the Como 4 newsroom and we have multiple cameras here that we can take within the newsroom and actually put it out on the Hangout. Very cool. Michael, talk to about us. Tell us all about you. Real quick. Uh, hi. Real quick. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I'm Michael. I live in Brisbane in Australia and I came across um, Jen and um, Sarah through, um, through contacts through Google+. Plus. Now what's been really, really great for me is um, since the mobile platform came out, we've done some really amazing things with um, we're actually going out and in, in a sense doing news gathering. So you, it's possible actually to go out live and it's been really great fun. Now That's we have that Mike, for a listen we have 30 seconds. We have Mike Downs who's just plugging in, so we're going to come back to him. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my co-worker and partner in crime, Sarah Hill, and tell us a little bit about why we're, why we're even talking about this, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, um, essentially we use UNews a lot during our interactive newscast at 11 a.m. It's called UNews. Um, this is the studio where we're from. Our Hangout is displayed in a 50-inch touchscreen monitor, and we select the different thumbnails to take on the air. Essentially, Google Plus is a free satellite truck right in the middle of a, a crowdsourcing tool, and we are using it to connect with viewers not just in mid-Missouri but around the world. It has huge implications as it relates to mobile journalism, and hopefully within this hour we'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, people are doing some really interesting things about it, including Tim Moore, um, who held the first NASCAR hangout as well, and so I'll pick it to Tim to introduce himself. <laughs> what a fabulous transition. Tim, tell us about you. Well, thank you, Sarah. Uh, Jen, uh, thank you kindly for inviting me. Uh, my name is Tim Moore. I'm the CEO of Crush IQ. We uh, deal a lot directly with Google and uh, helping brands um, get not only online, but uh, uh, to start using uh, um, Google Plus appropriately. 
I was formerly with the New York Times Company, where I helped uh, uh, implement some digital solutions um, and tried to help them transition from traditional print over to the digital world. Um, that's why I'm currently not with the New York Times anymore. Uh, that was a t more difficult than we thought. And uh, that's my uh, introduction. Back to you, Jen. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we had <laughs> Uh, we also had Mike Downs pop in. Mike, do you want to? We're doing quick introductions about why you're a part of the Hangout World. Uh, thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, I first met Sarah on the show in the uh, start of September, and that's progressed with me uh, helping out other TV stations around America. And then I'm pleased to say that it's moved over to Europe as well now. So as you can see, I'm in England, and uh, I also just started out a spot on a Thursday evening with uh, France 24 uh, with a debate there. He's, he's pushing Hangouts into Europe. It's pretty cool. All right, so you guys, this is the big question, and I'm going to start it with Sarah. Um, why? Why do you guys think that this is a game changer? I mean, we're doing a panel right now. We're talking about this at one of the leading institutions of journalism. Why do you think this is a game changer? I think it is because of the face-to-face -face interaction. Um, you know, we as newscasters and reporters and journalists constantly are interacting with our readers and our viewers behind the scenes of the newscast via text-based tweets or um, text-based Facebook interactions. We don't have any research right now to support this. Um, all we have is an anecdotal evidence, but that tells us that the level of the face-to-face -face contact is far a, a far deeper level of engagement than any behind-the-scenes texts or Facebook posts. We have the ability to see these individuals face-to-face. -face. I can look um, at Matt and talk about the color of the chairs in the background, um, ask for Michael Tucker about the crown molding in his house, um, a far level, deeper level of engagement that you would get than chatting with anybody's um, avatar or profile picture. And for mobile journalism, the fact that you can join Hangouts, not this particular Hangout because it's an on-air Hangout that streams within Google+, but um, the ability to join Hangouts from a mobile device and instead of, of live tweeting, text-based live tweeting, um, you can invite people to join your Hangout and show in mass what they are seeing from a breaking news event, from a breaking weather event. So we think that this space, as far as mobile journalism, has a really bright, bright future because you have the ability to show people, not just tell people in a text-based um, conversation. You also have the ability to have a group conversation about the day's news. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. It is a group conversation inside the world's first face-to-face -face social network where people are already gathering naturally. A lot of people say, well, isn't this just group Skype? Well, no, it's not group Skype because Skype is not attached to a social network. Um, you just don't go on Skype and hang out all day to get your news. People are not only getting their news on this platform, um, but more importantly than getting it, they want a forum to talk about it. So they are going from hangout to hangout to news hangout to NASCAR hangout um, in order to have those conversations. Right, and the one thing I want to make sure everyone, has everyone heard of uh, Hangouts on Air? It's a, it's a feature that not everyone has yet at, in the Google Plus, and the situation is this. Not only can just 10 people hop in and participate, an on-air Hangout, which this is one, it's on-air live on, on Sarah's profile, which means anyone could go to her profile and press play and watch this live. After we close down this chat, it'll automatically be visible on YouTube, well, actually not automatically, she has to make it public, but it goes into her account, and we can all go back and watch this hangout on her YouTube channel. Um, that makes this an even wider p potential, and we're looking forward to uh, a, an embed code where we can drop these right onto our website so the conversation expands into our brand even deeper. So, game changer. Matt, tell me why you think this is a game changer. I think I just have to echo what uh, Sarah said because it's a live interaction with our audience. I think that for a TV station, you always want to find out what people are thinking about, and here's a way to do it actually live on the air in a group speak setting um, and identifiable too because we can pick out people around the world. We know their name. We know what some of their interests are. 
almost that biographical information I can get immediately. I, if, uh, if I want to talk to Mike Downs on the air or live, I can click on a button and find out everything about Mike immediately. So even as in an instant, if I needed to get a quick reaction for people and put it on our air, I already know something about Mike already because of that tie-in, what Sarah was talking about. This is not just group Skype. It's putting video, <laughs> connecting it to a whole biographical information about a person. And that's very important for us as a journalist. We want to know who's talking, that they're just not some flake. I know Mike's not a flake. He's great. But uh, um, So anyway, that's one, that's one reason why we're going to – I think it's a game changer. And it's a fact that we can now distribute um, different ways to get uh, our product out. You know, we can send our product, our anchors, our newscast down the Google Plus line. It goes streams on YouTube through an on-air hangout. Um, we can even take the stream and embed it into a Facebook stream. So there's a lot of ways that we're just exploring on how to use this. So uh, I think it's great. Jen, you want to show the chat function? Oh, sure, sure. There's a, there's a chat going on. I, I didn't want to uh, cl you know, clear up the screen, but um, here's, here's the, uh, the chat function. We can have a whole, they have a whole ongoing conversation going on while we're listening to them talk. Hi. Um, and that, that's actually really handy for us um, who are behind the scenes. I'll help produce um, a, one of our U News shows, and if I have a viewer that's telling us about events, then I'll say, hey, could you just drop the links to those events? I can put it on our website, share it on our social, and instead of making, you know, hoping they'll email me or remember to send me that information, we can do it right now. We can also, as Sarah said, we can let people know what our stories are, We'll warn everyone, hey, stand by, you're about to come up on air. There's, there's a whole bunch of different ways, to, uh, two minutes left, or for us, 45. Um, links indeed, Mike. You guys are hilarious. They're producing this by, by text right now in here. And documents, which is true. Um, right now, you can share docs, and I've used this not, not for uh, television purposes, but for team purposes, where we're working on documents together. You can have team meetings on here. And, you know, we could have all coordinated, and funny faces, <laughs> you're right, um, you're right, um, I, I can become a, a dog. Um, <laughs> hey, you're always our dog. <laughs> hey, you guys are adorable. All right, so, so that's, there are a lot of functions beyond journalism, live journalism. There's awesome teamwork. There's, um, there's you know, basically, as, as we discussed, oh, look at that. Ooh. Um, Basically, what we have is potential unknown. I mean, Google never thought that we'd be broadcasting this live, but Kaomi was the first to do it because it made sense to me. Why not bring this on air? And Sarah has helped push it beyond that because she spends... Sarah, how many hours a day are you in a Google Plus hangout? Well, I mean, we're essentially hanging out during the newscast, so it's not like I'm spending any additional hours because it's simultaneous to what we're doing. So, you know, we spend about an hour-ish um, at 11, including pre-show and post-show. Um, we spend about 45 minutes um, during our 5 o'clock newscast, and then we hang out every day at 3.30 with no other agenda than to hear what's news to our viewers, so that's probably about 20 minutes or, or so. Um, but, Tim, you were mentioning some interesting about document sharing and, and PowerPoints. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I think one of the neat things that uh, is about this uh, communication channel um, is that uh, you can do private hangouts. So, um, you know, on air is uh, also excellent, but as educators and uh, those that are trying to transmit uh, uh, communications from one to another, whether, wherever they are on the globe, um, some of that needs to be confidential um, or is not for everyone's ears yet. So you can uh, start private hangouts, and uh, I do this all the time with clients where we will run through there, we'll screen share the site, we'll look over their site, or I'll run them through a deck of uh, training material that is uh, under an NDA, so it's all confidential, no one sees it happening. Um, and we can invite um, multiple people in, into that. Uh, so looping them in as for certain sections and leaving um, is um, just tremendous. So, uh, and I don't have to have four or five different other products for that. I can do it all right here. And Sarah and Jen, as you've learned, 
um, you know, the more that you are in this environment, the more you find that its power is beyond e even just our imagination. Just even though we're limited to about eight buttons at the top, uh, there's so much that we can do with this. Yes, and and Matt, you were just uh, streaming. I assume you just pulled in the stream of the press conference. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, what you're seeing there. Is uh, I have the ability to switch around things, and I just crashed the system. So that's what you saw. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to do two things at once and put a stream out of the Peyton Manning's about to speak a, in Denver uh, regarding, and you know, and then I can actually you know talk about it. See, see, see me split screen right here, and then. The idea behind this is that I can actually, if Peyton Manning is having his press conference, I can hold a Google Hangout right now, and we can have commentary as Peyton Manning is talking, and and then through the chat window, and then when you're streaming this live on air, um, I think that's really cool. You're actually having real-time interaction with the audience about a live news event, and this is a total alternative channel that we at Como are trying to develop, other than our main channel. And speaking of live news event, Mitt Romney is hanging out right now. Um, Mike Downs had a screen share of that. And on our live chat right now, DeSalva DeLeva says that she's interested in doing some research on that face-to-face -face engagement. So there's a live chat that's mm -hmm. going on on Google Plus right now um, okay. regarding this, this very hangout. And there's Mitt Romney in a hangout. President Obama did it first, um, and now Mitt Romney is taking questions as well. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and that's actually why our, our program had um, Steve Grove is going to be here speaking, but um, unfortunately, he's in charge of Hangouts, so he's uh, we lost out to Romney. I know, um, that, but I understand sort of. Jim, can I can I add a, a thing about Hangouts? One of the things uh, that I love to do is use social media in connection with the Hangouts. So if I'm in a Hangout uh, with Sarah and she's interviewing someone, I have. Um, a capability of taking a screenshot and then taking that screenshot and posting it on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, anywhere and saying that uh, basically uh, letting people know that I was in a hangout with Sarah Hill as she interviewed so and so mm -hmm. and that's not only getting the word out about me being in a hangout but it's getting the word out about Google+, it's also getting the word out about Sarah Hill and the person she interviewed. Yeah, so it's a way to get your followers to uh, help you get the word out about your news program. And yeah. another great thing, Sarah is the cause of me coming back to being interested in the news. Yay. Before her, I didn't watch the news. <laughs> I got my news from social media. But now that uh, I've involved, I've been involved with Sarah. Uh, since uh, the summer, it's made me come back to a love of being in the news and, and being involved with it and learning more and, and just watching. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, Kempton Jay. just popped in. Kempton, Hi. you want to introduce yourself really quick? Kempton is also one of our original hangouters who helped us build the community that we have. Um, yeah. So if you want to talk a little. Sure. Um, I'm Kempton Lamb. I'm from um, Calgary, yeah. Canada. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, uh, oh, with Sarah Hill and everyone um, since, I guess, since the beginning, um, since before the show uh, in September was launched and how about a little bit and then uh, the show was launched in September. So um, I want to share a personal experience here. Um, uh, just recently, um, I was hanging out in, uh, uh, in a BBC radio initiated hangout talking about uh, the latest uh, scandal with this, uh, this American life story of uh, the, the, the Mike, uh, Mike Lacey's story. So they were, we were talking and hanging out and then uh, through that hangout, they later reached back to me and got me on their uh, radio show. So, in a sense, this is a global tool where the, the radio show itself is in England. They have uh, me on from Canada, the people from uh, India, um, from all over the world. In a sense, you're bringing the audience, and, and it's astonishing to me that they are doing the, the show live on the day and be able to bring in feedback uh, people, voices from around the world. I think the show is called uh, uh, Your Voice uh, from Around the World or something like that. It's a BBC World Surface show. So it's really powerful tool, um, even given that example, just use an example. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask Sarah about uh, bringing this from, we've found an 
an ease globalizing our, our Hangouts, we're trying to also encourage the same amount of participation on a local level because that's where our newsroom is, is, uh, is attached to. Um, Sarah, if you want to share some of the ways we're working to expand our reach locally, then I want to have a moment and see if there are questions brewing in the, in the crowd. Yeah, and Stephanie Cruz, who is watching, um, I just invited you again, so click refresh on your screen. You should be able to um, join that Hangout. Stephanie is a TV newscaster in Sacramento. Um, essentially, we're taking a laptop around to, I went to Kiwanis clubs, um, community events, symposiums, um, rotary dinners, fundraising events with a laptop, essentially, and um, walked around and showed people what a Hangout looked like. And that was how we were able to get local viewers um, to connect with the space and create a Google Plus account in order to come on our air. Also, community groups, they always want to share their message. This is a forum for them to share their message. They don't even have to come to the studio. They can you know, join the Hangout from their office and in two minutes, um, you know, tell me on the air what they need to tell me. Um, so that's how we've been able to get more people on the platform is simply offering our platform for them to share about it. Um, RJI, the Reynolds Journalism Institute, also provided um, webcams. Um, so all of the libraries in our 14 county viewing area are enabled with webcams. So for instance, occasionally we will send people to a library if they don't have internet access or they can't afford a webcam, so they are able to go to the library and record essentially a PSA with us or hang out with us and tell us about their community event that they want to share. Exactly. All right, so this is a moment, it's not quite halfway, but I, I think we're, we're so, we could talk about this for hours. <laughs> no, yeah. We actually do. We actually do. Yes. Yes. We, yes. we actually do talk about this for hours. So you're looking at this in, in motion and in action. And we're kind of talking about the thought process behind how we're using this as journalists. What kind of questions are coming to your head as we talk about the future of taking advantage of these social hangouts? Any questions? Really? All right. Sarah, can you sort of walk them through what um, a segment of You News kind of looks like and how you're working with producers behind the scenes to sort of drag the social nets for ideas? Because I think that's, for people who don't know how that works, it's probably a fascinating mm -hmm. Right. Essentially, it's a two-person show. Um, our producer, uh, Jane McMillan, and Nathan Higgins before that um, is producing just like a regular newscast. Um, I'm hosting it, but we are also posting on all of our social network sites um, before and after the news begins as sort of a, a warm-up, if you will. Um, I wear two IFBs, so I have um, an IFB in one ear that has a producer and an off-air signal, but I also have the Hangouts in the other ear, um, and you might think, wow, that sounds like a lot to listen to, but it is actually fascinating for um, a broadcaster to hear instantaneous reaction for the very first time immediately as that news story is coming out of your mouth, whether that be if you're talking about a murder, um, the story that comes to mind, there was a child that was killed and we, I was reading the story and then I'm hearing the hangout sigh in my ear. It's a real-time reaction. Um, we were doing a story about gas prices um, going up and as I'm reading the story, I, I barely get it out of my mouth, I hear Michael Tucker in my other ear saying, well, it's $6 in Australia. So I was able to add that into the story. By the way, you know, someone from Australia just said that gas is $6 a gallon. So no longer do you do news and then you go back to the newsroom and you see what the reaction was to it or you check your social sites to see what the reaction is to it. You get that real time face to face in your ear, which is um, kind of a, a pretty unique situation. We co-host the show with a live hangout. So, you know, 10-person hangout, and we're able to bring them on the air during the show for interviews um, and to react to the day's news, and that's essentially how it works. It's a 30-minute 30 30 program. And Tim, you produce a number of online programs. Um, do you want to share some of the things that you're doing? Uh, yeah, I do all kinds of them. Um, I pop in on your on Sarah's couch all the time, and uh, big fan. She, you guys are doing great there at uh, KOMU, um, representing in Missouri, and uh, not just there, but across the globe. I mean, you see how this stuff reaches. Um, I also do a couple things for uh, a couple NASCAR teams. If you ever heard of NASCAR, um, and I do some. Uh, 
uh, other things with um, Google and uh, do some training for corporations where I'll go in and uh, we'll have Google come on and uh, we'll do some uh, setup and also some uh, uh, things for them. So uh, the tool makes this so easy once you get used to it. Um, but I did want to just say one thing if I could, Jen. And that is that um, as, as news people, we, uh, I think Sarah mentioned this early on, we have to be careful that we don't, um, uh, or our producers might say, well, where's the ROI of us uh, goofing around here on all this video? Um, and uh, there, there are no analytics just yet um, that show when we're on this Hangout um, wh how many people we have? How many? How big of, is our reach? In fact, the demogra uh, the analytics that are currently available, um, we see the biggest dip um, in our action on Google Plus. But um, I think what you see here, um, the person to person and that kind of uh, communication connection, um, cannot be reached in text form. Period. Yeah. And maybe Mike Downs wants to talk about circle count um, a little bit and tell people what circle count is. Like, you're absolutely right. We don't have analytics. Um, we have ripples that tells us you know, how far our Hangout has been shared. We ask people right now just a plus one um, if they're watching, but we realize some people wa watch and don't click that plus one button. But uh, Mike Downs, do you want to talk about, about cir circle count and what you're doing with them? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, CircleCount.com is a website um, set up by Daniel Sandstein um, from Europe, and uh, it's really looking at the analytics behind um, the users themselves, and certainly uh, with one of their new developments is mapping all of your followers, not, not entirely, but certainly graphically to see um, you know, where those followers are. So, for example, someone like Sarah here in um, Missouri uh, knows very much that on her map, you know, you can see that a phenomenal amount of users, say, for, from India, uh, you know, uh, as well as all over the world, and that really does uh, go to quantify, um, you know, how this this is coming. I, th I think for the Google Analytics, that's going to come quite soon. Uh, not that I know anything from Google, but I do know that uh, they're looking at things. Uh, the third-party apps, um, not only from CircleCount but a few others, uh, can tell us a phenomenal amount. And for example, you know, with Sarah's on airs, uh, been encouraging the users just to give it a quick plus one, and that you know acts as a uh, one piece of data. Cool. Um, I just asked if maybe you could drop a link and I can pull it up on the screen and, and share it with, with everybody. I just um, dropped it in. Oh, you did. Cool. Let me, let me pull this up real quick. And, uh, so what kind of reaction have you gotten from, from Circle Count? Have you gotten any? Like what, what, what industry folks, when you show this, do, do people understand it? I, I love Circle Count. Um, I use it quite a bit uh, for demographic information. So, uh, it, it, it for drilling down, um, it's one of the better tools we have. Mm -hmm. I can I'm just tell you that kind of showing a, a look at um, Sarah's Circle Count and her follower history, um, and, and just tons of stats um, and and history of her her use on on uh, Google Plus. Matt was going to say something. Matt, what were you, what were yeah, you well, it was what Tim was talking about, the ROI. And I could just tell you, I mean, some inside baseball here. Being in the 13th largest market, my bosses really don't care how far my reach is outside of the Seattle DMA. And that's a huge issue for success about this. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's convincing the advertising base that like with Sarah's mm -hmm. case, she's got all these people all outside of her DMA. I mean, there's more people following her than are actually in the market in Missouri there. And, and I've used that argument with my bosses here, and I tell you, that's my stone wall right now. It's a big stone wall to convince them that about the, to, to embrace Google Plus on an advertising in a matter because they cannot prove that uh, of, of the, the, let's say if I had 500,000 people following me, uh, can I, I? Can you tell many? Can you tell me uh, five thousand are in our local area? And how are you going to send? How am I going to give them an ad? That's where we sit right now at this station. It's hard. Um, and somebody is working to figure that out. And, and if you are that person, let us TP people know because we want <laughs> to talk to you. We could really. But I've got. But I've got an idea around that stuff. Um, the advertising, as I see it, and and as an outsider, was something that we looked at. Um, uh, for a while, is 
the advertising for this platform is very different to um, to the ad the advertising um, for um, the other stuff, and 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 it's really um, it's really important to look at other ways like. In, let's say in Melissa's case, Melissa is in Reno, Nevada, but they're in ski fields. And for me, which is, um, so, so all the tourism, all those sorts of ads are, are completely different than, um, than actually, you know, what would be for like, you know, the local chiropractor, for instance, or the local, um, you know, accountant and, and how they actually would operate. Um, because they're, they're not of relevance in this thing. and, and but there are other sources, and and tourism is probably a big one. Or um, the the guy that's got an online store that that can actually advertise. Those sorts of things, which are um, really really important as far as advertising space. So so maybe the actual paradigm of advertising needs to to move and and think outside the square. So and I just want to. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I just wanted to welcome Melissa Carlson. Um, she is also using um, Hangouts. She's from KRNB in Reno, Nevada. And Melissa, maybe you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing and how you are using Hangouts to connect with your viewers. And, and if you can you. unmute, sorry. There we go. There we go. Um, so what we're doing here is we are using them in a couple of different ways. We're starting off by using, let me adjust this camera, sorry. Just came off of the noon where we use the Hangouts. Um, we're using them first as a webcast, so at right before the noon show at 11 o'clock we do a webcast where we pick four, sometimes five topics that are trending, things that are happening, um, online talkers really, then we post them ahead of time, then we start to hang out at about 10.50, open it up, 11 o'clock we go live on, streaming on our website and streaming on my page uh, through the on-air account and we talk about issues and just basically, it runs usually about 20 minutes, it's free form because we don't have commercials. Um, so we let people just kind of go through and talk about the topics. And then what we're doing is uh, partly the webcast and also vetting for the noon. Once we do the webcast, I choose one story and then I usually ask everyone to help me check, choose a second story and then we put those two stories into the noon show. That's a much smaller version. It's about a three minute block. So 30 seconds to read the story, a minute for banter, 30 minutes, 30 seconds to read the story, a minute for banter. And then, uh, and so that's what we're doing. And then we post it on our Facebook page. We post it on our uh, website. And um, but we are looking to we shortly here, probably within the next couple months, we'll be starting up our own show, which is going to be based off of social media, a lot like what Sarah's doing. Um, and it's going to be Google Plus along with Facebook and Twitter. Um, so that is happening soon. No dates for sure yet, but soon. Awesome. So I have a quick question. We kind of just touched upon the challenge of regional broadcasters harnessing the power of Hangouts. Um, and I think the wall that we are all discussing is um, finding ways to monetize and prove its reach to those who are the monetizers. <laughs> so that's not really our job. We're here to do the journalism. Um, yeah. What, what do you guys think? Is there, is there um, a long-term potential in use it, using this tool, and do you think we'll be able to break through this challenge? Well, here, I'll, sh I'll show you on my little stream here. I'm going to monetize it in just a second here. Uh, <laughs> Papa John's pizza. Here we go. There we go. I got a little hey, pizza ad uh, right there. <laughs> Papa Murphy's Pizza is now sponsoring this Google Plus Hangout. Oh. Man, am I hungry. Yeah. So the idea is, you know, I'm doing this, and so far Google hasn't shut me down when I kind of do a multiple stream. You know, and it's, you know... We're, we're as long as you keep your lot. shirt on, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, we're, we're trying to monetize it by taking... How we're doing it is taking the Google Plus Hangouts and what we're doing on Google Plus and then restreaming it on our page, which is loaded with advertising. So that's... That's the approach I'm taking. We don't have any numbers to prove this yet, or you know, no one's actually really buying it except for Papa Murphy right now. But that's what we said. You know, with the new Google Analytics that are out now, um, they've now uh, just rolled out yesterday or today the new um, social uh, layer that they're now keeping track of. So, uh, you know, if you're doing on your Google Hangouts just that Papa Murphy. Thing and all of a sudden you look in your analytics and see Papa Murphy's up, it'd be a real easy way to draw the line straight to it. 
-hmm. And mm -hmm. Tim, talk a little bit about, about more, more about that because um, a lot of people probably aren't aware on what's involved with the new social analytics. So educate all of us about that. Well, uh, Google Analytics um, just uh, announced yesterday that, uh, and it came out this morning, that sure enough, um, in your social uh, or your Google Analytics, there's now a social component. So now you're able to um, look at um, your analytics and see where they're not just where um, likes or traffic's coming from through Facebook or Twitter or anything, but actual conversions. So you're actually able to see your total amount of um, sales, and then you're able to see that you're able to look into how many of those were influenced by social, and then there's another circle of these came directly from social. So if you look at your Google Analytics, you'll be able to see that there. Um, it's it, it's um, I think Mike mentioned earlier this is just the beginning. So we're going to see a lot more of these things um, come online. Yikes. And and I have to roll. Um, thank you so much, Ben, for having me. Uh, nice meeting everybody. I'm going to make room some, for some other folks. Sarah, right. be good. All right, I will. Take care, Tim. Thanks so much for sharing your time. Okay. All the best so, to you guys. So Shaka just got here. He is um, over at Fox LA. Uh, Shaka, do you want to tell everyone what you've been doing with, with Hangouts? Uh, sure, sure. So uh, what we've been doing is uh, we have a show, a morning show, called uh, Good Day LA. And we invite our, our celebrity guests who, who visit the show every morning to uh, jump to a hangout with uh, our viewers and uh, our now global audience. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we just uh, have a blast and, and uh, actually and incorporate that and, and, and make our, our product more interactive. So it's, uh, we, we have been saying that we uh, allow the, the viewers to become interviewers. Uh, in this case, so uh, we've been using the Hangouts I I that way, and also we've been using them to, uh, like I'm sure some of you may have, to, to allow people to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes in the newsroom. So during our noon newscast, we'll do a Hangout, and, and people get to interact with our anchors, and um, same thing during the 5 p.m. show. Uh, we, we use that as well, but today, for instance, I was actually a little late getting on, because there was a, a, a huge earthquake in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So what we were trying to do is connect with anybody who may have been near the epicenter uh, via Google Hangout and bring our viewers in Southern California um, images from somebody's cell phone who might have been in, uh, I believe it was uh, near Acapulco, in Oaxaca, Acapulco, in those areas uh, of Mexico. So uh, that's pretty much that's really how we've been using it to really just connect with our viewer and, and bring them inside what we're doing and connect them with some of the really fascinating people that we have on our shows in the mornings here. Yeah, Tishaka has a lot of celebrities that come through, so you can imagine the delight of some of the people who get to hang out with you know the stars um, of LA essentially. Uh, for instance, you mentioned Mexico. Um, in the aftermath of Os the Oslo bombings, we were able to bring mm -hmm. in people via Hangout mm -hmm. to talk with them about what they had it, it experienced in that respect. So that's just another example, as Tishaka mentions, of this being a free satellite truck in the middle of a crowdsourcing tool. Uh, by the way, um, if anyone does go to Sarah's, if, you're, if your computer is open and if you visit Sarah's Google Plus page, um, there is an ongoing fabulous conversation about what we're talking about right now under her her uh, live window and um, one of our another one of our members of Hangouts that have been with us for a while wanted to mention that um, his name is Joseph Paglisi and he says it's not about the channel it's about the content and where people are getting their news people don't wait for the 6 p.m. newscast and as the shift progresses we're going to have to deliver the news to the audience mm -hmm. where they are and he said because you know it's Joseph Gretzky said, "Great players go where the puck will be." So, there you, <laughs> you know what, Jean? One of the things uh, that Hangout has done also is created what we call hurls or hips, where we actually hang out in person, and a group of people who've only met via Google Plus Hangouts actually set a time to meet in person in a certain location. There was a big one in New York recently in February and then there was one locally in Colombia in, uh, in what was that, February and March. In March yeah. So... Out of town for those though. Sorry. <laughs> Stop trying. No. So it's, it's bringing that local uh, component to uh, 
Google Plus Hangouts by encouraging people to meet in person. When I travel to Singapore at the end of the month, I mean at the end of this week, I actually have already connected with someone that I'm going to do a hangout in real life with that I've only met on Google Plus who lives in Singapore. That's cool. And, um, you know, I was... But, I was just going to say, to follow up on what Gretzky says, I, uh, I've been convincing my boss to go fishing where the fish are. And to me, the fish are on Facebook and Google, well, growing Google+. Plus. I, I, our biggest uh, center of traffic on our website, we do 34 million page views a month, is from Facebook, outside of Google, is Facebook. And we're going to be hammering Facebook with actually maybe try to put a Google Plus Hangout on our stream to Facebook, trying to get those fish. <laughs> we would love to. If you figure out how to do that, let us know because we would love to. We're trying to figure out how to get in a feed between the two, and they're not obviously talking with. We're actually. Um, I don't know about Matt, but I, we're actually doing that now. It's something I've been playing with for about a week. So, really? Yes. Yeah. So I would love I, to know how you're doing it because we've we've been trying to get like a, is there an RSS feed that can can connect the two or how how are you doing it? I'm I'm using um, Ustream, so basically I'm pushing our Hangout stream out through Ustream using Ustream's Facebook app to then embed the Ustream into our uh, uh, fan page. Until so Facebook app shuts you down. Mm. <laughs> and it works really well. Awesome. We've got to do that. That's that's, that's good cool. to know, Shaka. And Shaka, you need to put an ad on it. Put Papa Murphy on there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Move your pizza to Daddy Green's Pizza. Maddie, yeah. Matt is buying pizza for everyone after this, by the way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you know what? This is unique. You have one, two, three different newscasters, four different newscasters from different cities, from different uh, affiliates who are strategizing together how to solve one problem. Speaking Can you do that on, on anywhere else but Google Plus yeah, Hangout? Yeah, okay, it's true. But I'd like to actually tell you about something that, that I've seen that when we talk about connecting with our audience, something that I've seen that's been fascinating to me is we always think of it as us connecting with people, but one of the interesting things I've seen with celebs is these celebrities are getting a chance to connect with people like they haven't before. And I'm going to tell you, there have been a few celebrities who I won't name by name who we've almost had to like kick out of the chair because yes. they enjoy so much that, that more intimate uh, discourse and, and connection with, the, with their fans. I mean, Ice Cube was sitting in this chair right where I'm sitting one day, and his, his people were rapping him. They were like, okay, you've, you've been interviewing long enough. It's time to go. And he looked over at his people and said, nah, I'm not rapping yet. You down there, you had a question and you had a question. You go ahead and ask your questions. And they couldn't make him get up. Christian Slater sat here forever and he didn't want to get up. So it was, they, they really actually enjoy doing Google Hangouts. Do you ever get them signed up before they leave in, onto Gmail to get them a G Plus account? Uh, unfortunately, because I'm running around like a chicken with his head cut off, I, I don't. You I'd, get I'd one. Do I'd love to. You did but, one. Yeah, I have actually, I've, I've, I've had one guy sign up that, but I had to do that on my own time. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Let before we continue, I want to take another break. We have another question. We have a couple of questions. So let's get a question. Hang in there. Curious to know if um, any of you are aware of people in print using this uh, tool. And if so, how they're using it. I'm, I'm from magazines, and I'm just kind of, it sounds like there may be some potential here. Oh, yeah. Mike and Melissa Jen. both raise their hands. Uh, just to let you know, Nevada Magazine here in Nevada is now starting to use them. We just, uh, they just, just, just now are starting. But what they're doing is their magazine for tourism for the state of Nevada. And um, they are now going to start to hop in. Once we get our show put together, they're going to come in on every Friday and talk about Nevada places to go for the weekend. So, And we also have our local newspaper, RGJ, the Reno Gazette Journal, also on G+. But they have not started Hangouts. Um, as of yet, so, um, but they are on, and they're print. And really, any medium can be a visual medium with this, right? It's one. Yeah. And Mike Downs, you were going to mention something as well. Uh, no, I, some, of, some of the work I do is just sort of liaising with, with TV and news stations, and one of the ones, um, sort of northeast coast, that I can't say where, but is a internet-only newspaper that is at, held behind a paywall 
but they are very interested in bringing Hangouts in. I said, well, how's the play war going to work? And they said, well, that is a very interesting question. I said, y you bet. So, so that's something that they're working on right now. You know, with that said, there's also something coming out of the UK, which was the, the International um, War on Drugs debate uh, by I. Uh, Q2 education, which although had BBC and you know well-known figures in it like Richard Branson, Russell Brand, and presidents of Mexico and Colombia, they also teamed up with you know an an amazing piece of live audience, uh, live broadcast, live YouTube, live hangouts. I think pretty much live everything. And my my message was that people need to watch it. And, uh, uh, Mike Freyada just had this comment on our live stream. He has some of the authors of Harper Collins are using Hangouts to connect to readers. Yeah, and I know of, uh, of newspaper journalists who have done multiple hangouts with themselves on their brands, no, their personal brands, and not their, their newsroom's brands. And um, that's a, an interesting history of Google+, Plus. I think, plays into this. Now, you guys might uh, agree with me or not. But uh, this started out as a, you are a person, not a brand. And KOMU started an illegal brand account um, when it first started and we got kicked out 19 days later. Um, I don't remember how many months brands have actually been in. January. How long? January, December, January. January time okay. um, I'd say the, the point of Google Plus initially, and I, more so still, is it's based on us as people who happen to be a part of newsrooms and you know I represent KOMU, Sarah represents KOMU, I represent Missouri School Journalism, all those brands um, and I will talk about those topics inside my personal hangouts. Um, KOMU as a brand is not hanging out as much as Sarah Hill and so that's the same case for some of the newspapers that I'm aware of. You know the, the, the tech savvy folks inside those papers are playing in these spaces but maybe not as officially as some of us are. What do you guys think? I think in the, in the world of journalism, this goes directly to the issue of trust. You can, you can trust a, a banner, a masthead, when it's in print, and that's likely what you look at. But when you're talking to somebody face-to-face, -face, that's where the trust relationship gets built in a hangout. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's I think that's what we wanted. That's why it's about building your personal brand first and then uh, building your business brand. But you can build both of them at the same time. Um, Google Plus, people like to get to know you as a person and build a relationship, and then they can trust your brain. There you go. And you also find that as far as story ideas coming into you, for instance, um, when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I have several direct messages from Australia <laughs> telling me what's going to be, here's what's going to be news today, because obviously they are way ahead of us, and Michael Tucker is laughing, but it, it's true, and he's always right. He's like, here's what's going to be your news today, and um, so those people then connect with you to, to share their story ideas and information in that way as well, because they see you in person face-to-face, -face, not just chatting with your still profile pic. Um, for, for those of you, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, no, I was going to say, make one simplistic point, and that is I think it's a lot of news types forget, uh, nobody here, of course, that um, by hanging out and, and parading around Google Plus on a page, you can't actually join anybody's hangouts to do with news or to do with people. You just can't get in. So that's one of the biggest things, you know, is saying, you, you know, you walk around, I mean, I won't name any names, Anderson Cooper, um, where he's, he's got this <laughs> phenomenal page, yet he can't, you know, if the page wanted to, can he break some news? No, he can't. He can't get in. So uh, it's a good job I didn't name anybody. <laughs> we have a couple more questions. I, I know you've raised your hands a couple of times, and we'll move back over to you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm a strategic uh, say, yeah, press the button, say it loud. I'm a oh, there you go. There we go. I'm a strategic communication student, and we're doing a project on you news and in media. And I was wondering, you guys have talked to a lot about the biographical information and how that's important with the network. What's the importance of the credibility of your viewers? How do you trust that they're saying the truth when someone without a title or who hasn't yet built their brand on Google Plus is sending you those story ideas? Well, we should mention that um, social media is the scanner of our century, right? And anything, just like a, a police scanner, anything you would hear on the scanner still has to be confirmed and vetted by multiple sources. So um, you can't get what you, you see on social media and, and always and take it as fact because news is a process. Um, because you, the viewer out there, are wanting um, news and information 
so quickly these days, you are seeing the unfolding of the process. You are seeing how in newsrooms, when the information comes in, sometimes it's not always um, accurate. So Google Plus is just another form of social media, and any information you get off that still has to be um, vetted by those individuals. For instance, you know, with the Oslo bombings, how do we know these individuals are who they say they are and they actually um, experienced it? Well, you know, you had to go to other individuals who knew them, you hang out with them before then, then talk with them about what they know. I mean, just like a reporter would do, um, social media, you have to do that too. You have to vet those individuals. And I think that's what, I, I think that's what's important what I was talking about before is that when I see somebody join a hangout, I can click a button and get immediate little briefing about them right away. They're just not like a someone calling in on a radio talk show hiding behind a faceless phone and I don't they could see Bill from Seattle and they're really somebody else but with Google Hangout there's some uh, with Google plus there's some accountability as to who's talking more so than radio we had another question over here since time's ticking I want to get more questions yeah, yeah Bob. okay I'm Carlos Miller and I, I've been on Google plus before because Thomas Hawk is a good friend of mine he's a big talker yeah. from San Francisco yeah. And he had me on his show a couple of weeks ago, and it all went well. Last week, we tried to do the same thing with Mickey Osterreicher, who is the general counsel of the National Press Photographers Association. And I was a panelist. We had these major issues with Echo. We could not do the show for two hours. We were struggling with it, and we... we we, we, yeah, we, we deal with that every day, and every, I know Tashaka and Melissa, because we as hosts have to figure out how to do that. And here's the problem. When you join a Hangout, some of those individuals are cl clicking the play button in the YouTube player that streams within uh, Google Plus before they join. So they are hearing the echo from that play button. So what you have to do when people join the Hangout, all they click is join this Hangout. They do not click um, the YouTube player below that plays. So that's why you had the echo issues. Also, earbuds eliminate. If everyone in your hangout has has an earbud, um, you can eliminate the echo. Now, earlier this week, earlier last week, there was an echo issue on Friday right. or Thursday. So I don't right. know if that was when it would happen. And by the way, this is all beta. So I mean, there are some bugs that that go around. We are the only crazy ones who are actually, you know, putting it putting it on the air. And it's been great. For us, because we, we know how to eliminate those echo issues, there are also green audio levels underneath the thumbnails. And so if someone, if there's a buzz on somebody's line, clap somebody, and, and I can see, okay, you see how their audio levels go up? So you can instantly identify who it is, click on their thumbnail, and then mute them um, at the top of your screen, and then they're not able to talk. But they can unmute themselves. Um, and able to, to cre contribute to the conversation. There's also a, a blocking feature as well. So that's a little bit about how that works. And here is Makalo. Hey, how are you? Hey, hey Makalo. This is Phoenix. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm Makalo at the uh, NBC in uh, Los Angeles. I've been, out, I've been out of the Hangouts for a while, so I apologize. We've been dealing with some internal stuff. Well, so. we're so glad you dropped by because we have about six minutes left of this panel. Um, <laughs> and we've been having fabulous conversation about the power of this tool. Would you like to share some of the powerful moments you've had and why you're, you're hopping back into it? Uh, well, I mean, I've used uh, a lot of the Hangouts not only to some generate some stories, but also just kind of generate reaction to the stories that we were we're trending. I do a segment on our show, on our midday and our morning show called The Trend, and it's about what's trending amongst social media users. So I'm able to get those stories, go into a hangout, and then talk to folks and use some of that uh, in the business we call sound or interviews and uh, broadcast that to our viewers here in Los Angeles. That's fabulous. All right. I know we have other questions. There were other questions. Do we have any Hey, Jen. Yes. I just want to point something out. When we talk about the power of hangouts, where else would you ever see Fox and NBC in the same session? <laughs> nice to finally meet you, by the way. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, well, we can keep going for five more minutes. I just want to make sure. Oh, I and there was something Sarah there. spoke about, the, uh, the, audio, the audio echo. The, the issue that was going through last week, they also identified, and uh, some people um, received uh, messages from various community managers saying, hey, there's an update to the Google Talk plugin download this update and that will resolve the issue. So like she said, we're in beta, but you know, they're pretty actively fixing, fixing problems and the great thing is when one of us receives that, everybody shares it and then it, it spreads throughout the community and everybody can yeah. resolve their issues. 
Oh, hey, check this out. Catherine Graham just jumped, jumped in. Hi, Catherine. Um, I was hoping you could drop by before we were wrapped up. We have five more minutes. Thank you so much for dropping by. Could, could you have been a, a part of Google and the entire Hangout experience from the very start? Um, could you tell us a little bit about where, what you're doing in the community and maybe how journalism can, folks can keep working with you? Yeah. So, um, I have been a community manager for Hangouts and Chats since um, July is when I started. And basically, my role is just making sure that everyone is enjoying the product, having fun. And I try, I try to make sure that I'm always exposing the really cool use cases um, that just to draw attention to the cool stuff people are doing and to, you know, spark um, inspiration in other people as well. So that's kind of how I um, look at my job as well as obviously finding any kind of issues going on and helping to escalate those to our engineering team so we can keep the product going strong for y'all. Um, but yeah, the journalism community, and we talk about this a lot as a team, um, in really pushing the product and helping us to push the product too and keep making changes that um, you know, make the product better for, for your purposes as well. So it's been awesome to watch what you guys have done and it's really kept us on our toes as well. Yeah, I like that we're doing that, keeping you on your toes. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, any questions for Catherine? This is your chance to pick the brains of a Googler. <laughs> Did you think Hangouts would take off this, this much, much um, or does the, the popularity of this space, does it su surprise you at all? I think that, I mean, I, I definitely was really confident in it, in it right from the get-go. Um, I, when I came onto the team, I was so excited to have this be my product. I, didn't, I wasn't told what okay, I was going to do. Um, so when I found out it was Hangouts, I was just like blown away. Um, but just, I guess, from um, using it, at the way that we use it as a company, I knew kind of right from the get-go, I felt like it was going to be a huge hit. And, um, it definitely has, um, you know, seemed that way to me. So, I don't know. I think that there's there's a lot, um, you know, to come that's going to make it even better. Um, but I think that it's definitely been awesome so far. So, um, And it looks like Mike here um, has a question. So, um, another thing, just to um, a heads up for everyone out there, on Thursdays, um, the Hangouts team hosts Hangouts to get feedback from you all. So um, if you go to David Bennett's um, profile page, he always lists um, different links to all the different Hangouts going on from the Hangouts team itself. So we really use that time to get um, feedback from you guys that literally I, you know, sometimes leave those Hangouts and I'm filing things and um, taking the feedback and sending it to the team directly. So we really um, you know, value everything everyone is telling us, good or bad. So um, this week, I think it's going to be in the 10 to 11 um, a.m. Pacific spot, but it's usually either 10 to 11 or 5 to 6. So um, we'll po be posting about that either later today or um, tomorrow and how you can get involved. So up oh, there, uh, Mike, did you have a quick question? Uh, no, no, I was just, just prepping Catherine about what she does for a living. That's all. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. <laughs> Well, I just want to say that if you were to go, I put in the link uh, there, um, Jen, if uh, right now I am, I just put this Hangout on our stream, so we're actually streaming this live on the Como website cool. with my ad, and this is how, I want to thank you guys for monetizing this Hangout for me, okay? Although I just, there is a feed, there we go. So if you click on it now, you're actually watching, helping me earn my l paycheck. <laughs> if, if only we were eating a slice of pizza, it would really That's conflict right. with it. <laughs> That's I'm, awesome. hu I'm hungry now. Well, our, our time has wrapped up. Um, I, I appreciate all of you for participating. This is fabulous. I'm honored to be a part of um, your sales today. And um, hopefully we can all find more and exciting things to share with Catherine and, and the rest of the community. What I do find fascinating is that we do have all these different brands that are talking to each other because um, I believe that of all the types of journalists, social journalists are the ones that share the best. Um, we're in this together. So thank you everybody and thank you the, to those of you in here and uh, let's keep talking online. Thanks guys. See ya. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate all of you sharing your time.
Right. No problem. Love it. So, yeah. And Catherine, no especially, I know we, we wedged you in there, so I so appreciate you availing it. Yeah, no worries. I had a, a, a meeting that was going over, so I was like, guys, I got to go. So I'm glad it worked. Well, yeah, it was, we had a great discussion. Um, you know, obviously, us TV newsies are geeked out about this platform, and so I think this is the first time we've had all of us here together in one space. So mm -hmm. are there any things that we need to collaborate on or anything, um, you know, we can learn from each other um, in, in that respect? You know, I have, I have something, something that we're working on right now and that, that we're having, I, I guess I would say difficulty with or something that we're, let's just say, working on, is that we're having problems still um, finding people who, A, are getting onto or interested in getting onto Google+, Plus, and I know that's something that everyone's battling, um, but also we're having this strange kind of reflux of people saying, why should I care what these people are saying on Google Plus? So I'm just wondering, how is everyone individually dealing with that? Are you? And then what's your response to it? Mm -hmm. Chances are those individuals, um, to stop Shaka will let you weigh in as well, but I mean, I, they're over 50, right? And you really hate um, to say this, but our future news viewers are interested in where those conversations are happening. Um, but if you would ask the person of those ages who email you, emails your general manager, or better yet, writes out on a handwritten note <laughs> those comments, um, chances are they're over 50. So you know, the younger generation, the future consumers of our um, content are very much interested in what other people have to say because that's where they go. Tashaka, what do you uh, think? Well, my response is, is I think it's somewhat long-winded, so I'll, I'll just um, cut it down and just say ditto. <laughs> really, I'm but, really but, but there, are, there are some of us. There are some of us over 50s who, who like the new media. Okay, that's <laughs> right. I know, and I I, did, I did, don't mean to stereotype in that respect. Um, but you know, that's that. This is the future, and you have to have core revenue models and non-core revenue models. And you know, for for right now, maybe this is a, a non-core, but in the future, it might not be. Well, and that's I, I think that's the same thing with business. You have to. You, you know, being able to see what's coming and, and, and jump in now and get in at, at the, so that, that when that wave kind of crests, you're, you're riding the, the top of that wave. And so you're going to be in a position where you are going to have some people that say, I don't see the value in this. But, um, you know, one of, not that I like a whole lot of Steve Jobs quotes, but one of the ones I liked that he said was when he talked about, um, uh, not giving the consumer what they want because what they're saying they want is based on what they currently know and actually innovating and creating something that they don't yet know even that they want. And so I think that in, in this business we have to be at the forefront of that and creating experiences that, that younger news viewers don't yet know that they want but that when they become heavy news consumers we've already been there and already been establishing relationships with them so that they naturally turn to us because we're f we've been there from, from jump, from the, from the beginning. You might also be able to make the argument um, that this is just a tool for journalism, so does it necessarily need to be monetized? You know, we haven't tried to monetize the telephone or, you know, in other ways that we communicate, so maybe for right now, you know, why not just use this as a tool to connect with viewers or, or to tell stories? I, I wish that was the case here. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I mean, it, it, it's obviously it may not be the case here. <laughs> I'm just speaking, you know, personally, but obviously, you know, uh, the sales department would have a different take. But you know, that that's one take for it in the interim. That you know, until somebody really finds a way, and Matt, you found a way. Um, we haven't quite yet. I think business people are starting to get the idea that they need to be on Google Plus because for the last seven months, eight months, I've been telling this one coaching group that I travel around the world and, and, and we train people to do social media and, and all like that. I've been telling them, get on Google+, Plus. we got to teach people this. And they've been telling me, what's Google+, Plus? why is it important? And now they're finding that it's important to do that. I think so, the, uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. But, no, I was just going to say, so seeing newscasters use it, and, and it getting out on social media that newscasters are starting to use it, then now business people are saying, oh, I guess this is important. See, with Google Analytics, we can, you know, track where people are coming to our website. We can't track 
if they saw something on Facebook or Google Plus that all of a sudden they turned on the TV. We can't make that connection yet. And so what I've been using is those analytics that say, look, from uh, this Facebook page over here at this time, you know, we did this, and now look at all. At this moment, we knew they came to this story on our page, and they're coming from social media to our website. And what I'm trying to figure out is how I can make up a measurement where people are seeing stuff on Google Plus or watching a Hangout, and they turned on the TV, or we have several radio stations here. They turned on the radio. That's the missing link that I need to figure out, or we need to figure out, to convince the old broadcast advertising modelers that there's a connection between social media and people turning on the TV and the radio. Yeah, I think they're going to, you know, some people will try to say uh, correlation doesn't equal causation, but I think there's a very strong correlation when, let's say, there's a major breaking news event your website spikes by a couple hundred thousand page views mm -hmm. and you had a rating or share that increased around that same time. So, mm -hmm. you know, they can only, once was coincidence, but, you know, when that begins to happen on a, on a consistent basis with large events, with large breaking news events, then they can only for so long say, well, you know, I, we don't know, there's no hard evidence. Well, it's like, no, every time we've seen this, over these last few events, we've actually seen a rating and we've seen page views, and so there's a very strong uh, corollary. Yeah. I mean, they've we're used we're trying to, <laughs> for so we're long. Trying to use that. Exactly, Shaka, because we're doing the same thing. We had, an, it's unfortunate, but it was in, in a way fortunate for us to look at. Within a three month span here in Reno, we had um, an IHOP shooting that happened, an air race crash, and a Reno a fire in Reno that did, took over most of Reno. So we had three large events within pretty much a three month period. And we were able to look at those three months through Google Analytics and see this incredible spike on our web traffic. It was it was like low, 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 boom, low, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. So you could you could you could actually look at a three month span and measure it out and then take a look at our Facebook and that's what we were using at that point was just Facebook. But look at our Facebook spikes that happened at that at that point. You know, we were, you know, gaining um, like 11,000 and, you know, just getting big hits within a certain amount of time. So it's helpful. The problem is it's not consistent. We were lucky to have that three-month span, but we're looking for something that's a little bit more consistent because like everybody else, we're battling the whole how do we sell this to our local advertisers. And while that little blip was good, it's not consistent enough for us to base sales off of as of yet. We're trying. We're definitely trying. But it's just not happening yet, which is, I'm sure, you know, anybody has got a sales department knows it's um, not good. Yeah, we're, we're trying too. And we've just the, forgot about all the CPMs and just gone straight sponsorship, you know, to mm -hmm. buy the spike. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Papa Murphy was... I hate to go back to that. It just seemed to run. <laughs> they actually stepped up the plate when we had a snowstorm, and they bought they bought into the idea that when news happens, people can gag today, but will come to those trusted sources, and there will be spikes. And they're you know what? They're not going to get their advertisement out today because there's nothing going on today. But they're going to get it tomorrow when the snow hits, and they know that. So they were smart enough to do that. And that's the key is we're is educating the advertisers on our end that this is a n different medium. It's not the 5 o'clock news mm -hmm. every 5 o'clock. Yeah. And it's over and over again. This is, yeah. this, you have this surge mentality. And um, yeah. anyway, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone is getting the news when it happens on their mobile device or, or on the, on the website. They're not going to wait. Sorry. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, no, I can. Yeah. So I was saying, um, nowadays everyone gets their news uh, from the internet website or from the mobile device. They're, they're less and less going to wait for the 6 p.m. news uh, appointment TV. They, most of the time, like news, I, I'm a news junkie, but I think there are a lot more people who, uh, because of big events and why, they'll just mm -hmm. go to the source and then learn about those news uh, way ahead of the, the 6 p.m. And if we are not monetizing the event as it happens, mm -hmm. then, then we are mm -hmm. not uh, Yeah, well put. We are all headed um, to afternoon meetings, aren't we? So um, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate all of you joining us, and thank you so much for sharing your sentiment. And I think we just all need to keep in touch on, you know, figuring these these things out. Um,
in that respect because I can certainly learn a lot from uh, Matt what you're doing and what Melissa's doing and Tishaka as well so it's been great to be able to watch you well, guys. Well I'm happy to share everything because you're leading the way Sarah so I'm happy to share anything we've got. Sounds good and I look forward to talking with you in the future. I know Melissa's going to hurl in Las Vegas. Um, it would be great if we, could, we could talk you into coming Matt. Um, to NAB, are you going to come? Yeah, I'm going. Great. Oh, well, then we we can have more conversations um, there, and maybe over you know a, a dinner sometime we can we can you can share with me um, some more. So appreciate absolutely, that. absolutely. All right, Mike Kim, okay. Kempton, Matt, sure appreciate. It. Thanks for availing your time. We'll you Everybody Thank watching you. on the live stream, thanks. Bye. For all. Appreciate your questions. All right, see ya. Bye, everyone. Bye.